Hello everybody, it's David Fisher, Founder and Director of Immigration Chambers New Zealand, welcoming you to 2021. It's our first video of the year and today just want to talk about my thoughts of this year, recap on last year, uh, we're going to talk about big changes coming up, work visas, um, residents, the EOI's expression of interest, when, whether they're opening, when they're opening, and we're going to talk about the border closures. Now, this is not going to be a long video. This is really just to, to welcome everybody to the new year. I hope you've all had a wonderful uh, Christmas and, and New Year break. We've In our office, we've, we've had a week off or so, a couple of weeks, and we're all back at work now. It's Monday, January the 8th, 2021. Amazing that we've made it this far. 2020 was a crazy year. The, uh, the pandemic has thrown a huge spanner in the works, and it's just changed everything. So on top of the changes that Immigration New Zealand have been wanting to implement, which some of which have been delayed, um, the, the immigration officers and the policy makers have had to deal with the changing scenarios on a daily basis. Um, border closures have meant that certain categories have been closed for a long time now, and the, um, the, the pandemic changing situation of the pandemic has meant that there's, there's very little certainty in this, in this space. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, what about the border closure? What is happening with this border right now? Is it going to open this year? Um, is, it, is it going to be closed for another year? Now, the reality is, everybody, we just don't know. All we can really do is go on speculation. But the problem you see is that, that the, the, the facts that we need to calculate with are actually changing um, very frequently, very rapidly. Uh, just had a phone call with somebody this morning from Germany, and, uh, and he's on lockdown. Uh, London's on a big lockdown. Tokyo um, and many other cities in Japan are, are on lockdown again. Um, there's another spike in the USA after the election. Um, you know, there's talk of, of a new strain that's going to arrive here in New Zealand shortly or, or supposedly is here already. And, and this just means that the New Zealand government is not really able to offer certainty about when there will be, you know, opening in any meaningful way our, our border. What I can say is that the, the economic considerations are strong for, for certain, um, certain degree of opening of the border. And, and I believe, this is my personal view, I believe that at some stage this year you will see limited uh, joint bubble operations with Australia. And I say limited because I mean uh, this may not be for every state, it may not just be a complete opening um, of Australia. And, and I believe also that we may see uh, the, the New Zealand government allowing certain types of students to apply and, and to come into New Zealand, certain types. Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is, is, is not some kind of a general blanket, um, you know, hey, let's, let's let the students um, for this level study or that level study, but it may be in, in particular categories, um, there may be certain levels of study. And, and even though I say that, um, I don't see it happening in the next six months, maybe more likely in the next 12 months. Realistically speaking, it's my view that you will not see the border open in 2021 in any normal meaningful way and based on that I think that um, anybody who's got plans to migrate to New Zealand um, who are offshore currently need to be a, a little bit um, let's say conservative in their outlook and, and perhaps to think of a, a three to five year plan rather than a, a three to six month plan. Now um, what does it mean for those who are already here? Okay, for those who are already here, um, it means that if you want to stay, um, you, you, you really need to start looking at your options for, for how to stay. And this brings me into the second topic to talk about today, which is the big work visa changes coming up this year. Now, there's a lot of um, literature out there on the internet. You can research it yourself. I'm not going to um, sit here and go through details. That's not what this video is for. But, um, but generally speaking, what we're looking at is a, a, um, a removal of all current existing work visa types um, and then a replacement of all of those with a new single category which has criteria based on region, based on salary. Um, and, and, and the idea of this is that New Zealand is trying to 
uh, to trying to bring work visas in line with the actual requirements of, of New Zealand. Because remember everybody, work visas and the, the immigration system is not, um, is not here so that migrants can get visas. It's here so that New Zealand as a country can fill gaps in the labor market and can, can support its economy. And, and thereby, you know, obviously offering um, visas to migrants who can fill those categories and, and those skill um, requirements. So what we're going to see later this year, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that we're going to see around the middle of the year, June, July, which is the indication I've been given from some immigration managers, that we'll see an implementation of, um, at, uh, number one, the new work visa categories, and number two, um, a requirement of accreditation. So there are three, three key things to, to look at, and that is that you'll have to be paid at a certain rate, you'll have to satisfy a, a labor market check, depending on which region and, and what pay rate um, you're getting, and your employer will need to have some form of accreditation. Now this accreditation, um, there's a lot of talk about it. Um, I think if, if you're an employer, or if, if you're discussing with your employer about what this accreditation means, now is the time to start talking to a professional. Um, now is the time to start looking into it because Immigration New Zealand is, is going to be offering this accreditation to employers who can demonstrate that they they actually meet the base level of, of um, you know employment law, immigration law, and, and are financially sustainable. So now might be a time to be talking to someone about your, your human resource practices, about your um, employment practices, whether your wage and time records are, are up, up to play, um, up to standard for New Zealand legislation. Keep in mind that New Zealand legislation for employment can be a little bit complex and complicated. Many employers don't fully understand it, and it's actually quite common that employers are not compliant. So if you feel like you've got a job offer with um, an employer who may not actually be compliant, now is the time to start talking about that. Now is the time to, to engage with professionals to make sure that your, your documents are in line, your, um, your employment practices are in line. It's very important. Um, in terms of the, the labour market check, what you're going to find is that there are going to be some regions of New Zealand where the labour market check, in other words, the advertisement requirement for the visa, um, just doesn't exist. And this will be great. So, so if, if, you're, if you're employed in, in maybe in a small town in and in a rural area, you may not have to advertise that position. You may be able to just go ahead and apply for the, 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 um, the visa straight away without that. And this is, this is good news for some people. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that um, there's a trend towards uh, wanting higher pay more money, more tax, um, it's, it's all about the money. And, and this government is very keen on seeing people paid properly and paid well. So um, everybody keep that in mind. Um, your, your pay rate increases, but therefore your employer's financial strength might decrease based on that. Um, some, some employers are reliant on migrant labor and they're suddenly having to increase their, 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 um, their hourly rates from around 20 or 21 dollars all of a sudden now up to 25 50 to, to you know to help people keep the jobs and support the visas and that extra five dollars per hour across three or four employees let's call it four employees twenty dollars an hour if you're open for 50 hours a week um, you know then it actually adds up doesn't it it, 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 it turns out to be quite a bit of money and employment, um, employment sustainability may decrease because of that. Let's all just keep that in mind. It's not so easy just to get a big pay rise. And if you don't have that pay rise, you might be looking at shorter term visas. This is something that's gonna be um, a little bit more, um, uh, let's say the, the, the policy around this and how it's gonna work out will be more clear later this year. I'm expecting we may hear something at least by April or May. Um, I'm hoping at least, and and then the policy will likely be implemented June, July. This is what we're being told. Um, nothing, uh, don't hold me to it. Nothing's for certain just at this stage. This is just a forecast for the year for 2021. Um, now, the last the last thing to mention that's that's on the horizon for 2021 is residents. The expression of interest, the the skilled migrant category expression of interest, has been closed now for almost a year, and. At the time when, it, when, it, when they first announced the closure, we all thought, oh, you know, okay, three to six months, and then we'll start seeing them selecting from the pool again. Now, um, it's, 
no, it's it's not open, and it's and there's no sign of it opening anytime soon. Um, what is important to keep in mind is that the pool of the the expressions of interest, the pool itself is open, um, and if and uh, if you think about it like a swimming pool, yeah, the pool's open. You can jump in the pool. You can you can place your expression of interest in the pool. Um, the point is that the selection process is is closed. That they are not selecting any expressions of interest at the moment. And there is a lot of conjecture and rumor about what's going to happen when it does open. Many people are afraid about um, not being eligible when it opens because they may change the, the rules. They may, they may um, increase the points requirement, uh, language requirement, salary requirement. Um, who knows, they may completely change altogether the entire category, in which case um, everybody in the last you know, year who's been submitting their expression of interest will have to reassess their eligibility. Now, will they do that is the question. Um, and I guess you have to, you know, to, to, to find the answer to that, you, ha you have to think to yourself, well, what type of government do we have? Do we have a government that will do something rash, you know, and, and you know, completely just change everything all at once um, without warning? Or do we have a government who's going to be a little bit more, um, or apply a bit more of a cautioned approach and perhaps, um, Perhaps they will allow selections from the pool that are already in the pool uh, based on the existing criteria. Meanwhile, closing the pool and then changing the policy for the for the new lot. Uh, this is something that that again we don't know. Um, the government that we have at the moment is a little bit of an unknown quantity because they've they've recently been elected, um, and and Labour effectively has the power to govern alone. Um, and, and boosted by the, the confidence of now an American election, which has gone again um, uh, back to the, the Democrats, um, the, the House as well, the Senate has gone to the Democrats. So both New Zealand and USA now are in, in alignment. And, and what I'm expecting is that you might see more policy that's more in line with the, the globalist agenda, um, the United Nations, the um, the, the idea that we, we can all work as one world together, this is something that, that um, the, the left-wing parties are, are more in line with. Um, and now based on that, um, you know, what, what does this mean for the, the residence program? Does it, does it mean that they're going to be more um, lenient towards individual migrants or are they just going to you know, put a blanket policy across the board and say, no, if you're not eligible anymore, you're not eligible? Too bad if you were eligible last year when you submitted it. Anyway, it's been closed. Um, look, again, this is something we just don't know. What's my view? Um, my personal view, and, and I say this based on what I think I would do if I were um, you know, in, in power or had the, the ability to do it, is that I, I think I would uh, allow selections from the pool based on submissions that have already gone in. And I think that that, that that would be the fair thing to do. It would be fair and just to to allow selections from the pool, um, the, you know, based on the criteria that's been in place when people su submitted them. I think that would be fair. Um, having said that, there would be a large number, and they may, and Immigration New Zealand may not wish to suddenly just engage with a huge number out of the blue. Um, it, it would be wise, in my opinion, for them to close the pool and to stop allowing people to submit expressions of interest. Um, if, if they're planning on changing things. So um, with that in mind, we've been informing people, not advising, but we've been informing people that on the one hand, there's a possibility that you could submit your expression of interest and later become not eligible. You've lost your um, $530 that you pay and any, any uh, legal fees you pay to a professional. Um, and you may not be eligible anymore if they change the policy. On the other hand, if you don't submit an expression of interest now, even though you're eligible now, uh, there's a possibility they may just close the pool. And, the, and if the pool is closed and you're no longer able to submit an expression of interest at all, you may have missed out because they may begin selecting from the pool as it is. Now, um, this is something we've been informing people of only because um, you know this, we can see it's a possibility it could go either way. Uh, we don't like to advise people one way or the other. This is a personal decision to make whether you risk your money or whether you risk um, taking a chance that you might not get into the pool altogether. Um, but look, these three categories of the border closure, um, changing work visas and the residence program, these are all things that 
I have to emphasize uh, there are unknown quantities. We do not know what the government's going to do. All we can say is that it's very important to look at your personal circumstances and to, to try to determine in your own world what you think is the right thing to do based on uh, the possibility of, of A, B or C happening. And you know, 2021 is going to be a very interesting year. It's, um, it's going to be, I, I believe, it's going to be still marred by this pandemic, um, most likely for the entirety of the year. I, I, I doubt that we're going to see a sudden um, uh, you know, uh, disappearing of, of a virus um, based on a vaccine. Vaccines can take a long time to develop properly. Um, you know, the initial trials now have come out, but, but again, look, I'm not a doctor, but um, you know, vaccines I know can take a while to really perfect. So, so look, let's all just, let's all try to stay safe. Let's all try to um, consolidate um, our plans. And as, as I always tell you guys, if you're concerned about, you know, what your situation is and if you're not quite sure what to do get in touch with a professional get in touch with someone who's licensed or who's who's exempt from licensing such as a lawyer um, uh, make sure that the person you're talking to actually knows what they're talking about and and uh, you know look 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 deep inside yourself at your long-term plans as well because we need to start looking at five to ten year plans we need to start um, um, thinking about our migration goals in, in terms of a longer time frame um, it's not the case that, that uh, you can apply for residence and be granted within three to six months like it was in the past. Um, things are taking much longer than before. And with that in mind, wish you guys all a happy new year. And uh, I hope it all works out for all of you and, and you get all of your goals achieved.